Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the talk, Deep Reinforcement Learning-Based Image Captioning with the Embedding Reward. I am Joe Ren from Snap Research. This is a joint work with um, Xiaoyun, Ning, Xu Tao, and Li Jia. In this work, we focus on the problem of image captioning. Image captioning is a problem of giving an image to generate a sentence which describes its visual content. Image captioning is being, has been very interesting and challenging because it has to understand a huge amount of visual information and then express it in natural languages. Recently, there are many related work on this problem. Previous works can be categorized into two groups. Before the recent era of deep learning, the first group of method tried to handle this problem by first running some intermediate tasks such as attribute prediction, object detection, and then they use a language model to generate a sentence at once. This type of method is limited because they depends on intermediate tasks, which makes them unstable. Recently, with the deep learning techniques, the second group of method got inspired by machine translation. They use an encoder to encode the vision visual information, and then a decoder to generate a sentence word by word. On top of this encoder-decoder framework, many advanced techniques have been proposed, such as word detection, spatial attention, and semantic attention. However, there are some limitations of this mainstream framework. Since they generate sentence sequentially, only local information is utilized. Local here means the, the information before each time step. It doesn't consider the big picture of what kind of sentences are suitable to the very end. And secondly, when you only consider the local information beforehand, it is prone to accumulate the generation errors during inference. And lastly, it is sensitive to beam sizes during beam search. So our target of this paper is a method that is better at capturing global information, be able to compensate errors, and less sensitive to beam sizes. To reach this target, we propose a decision-making framework with a reinforcement learning for image captioning in this paper. Decision-making have been very effective and popular in gaming and control, even though it's a new term in image captioning and have never been applied there. For example, well-known works include human naval gaming control, AlphaGo, and visual navigation. Among all these works, there is an agent that interacts with the environment, take a series of actions to reach a predefined goal. Reinforcement learning is used here to learn the agents with the reward as a feedback. As we know, all these works are very good at capturing the global information. At each time step, they make a decision with the big picture. So we got inspired. And the first problem is how to reformulate image captioning in a decision-making perspective. In image captioning, the, re the goal is to generate a visual description given an image an agent refers to the image captioning mo model we want to learn. And the environment means the given image and the words predicted so far. And a state is just a re representation of the environment at time step t. The action refers to the word to generate at t plus 1. And the reward, as said before, is the feedback for reinforcement learning. Now let me give an overview of our approach. Remember that our target is to better capture the global information and the less likely to, gen to accumulate errors during inference. So we design our agents, which contains a policy network to capture the local information and the value network to capture the global information. We also propose an embedding-driven reinforcement learning method for training and a look hand inference for testing. In the following, I'll present these three components one by one. As said, our agents contain a policy network and a value network. Our policy network serves as a, as a local guidance, which provides the confidence of generating the next word according to, according to the current state. We use the CNN followed by RN to provide such conditional probability. As we can see, this is exactly an encoder-decoder model. Here is an example. Given the current state like this, the probability of our next action will be like this. Now let me introduce our value network, which is the key difference. Our value network serves as a global guidance. Given the current state, an image, and a partially generated sentence, the value network gives an estimation of how good such state is towards the final goal. That is, how likely this partially gen generated sentence will end up with a very good description for this image. 
our value network is trying to regress the reward in the end. I'll define our reward in a minute. So we use a CNN and a RNN to capture information separately. After concatenating them, we pass it through a multi-layer perception to provide such scalar value estimation. Here are two examples. Given this image, the, gener the partially generated sentence, a dog sits on A, is with a high value. However, the partial sentence, Princess Snow White, is with a low value. As we can see, our value network gives a very good global guidance so that during inference, we can generate sentence with a big picture. We train our agents by first pre-train our policy network with the cross-entropy loss, which is a standard loss, and then pre-train our value network with the mean square loss to regress it to the rewards, as mentioned before. And then we train them jointly use deep reinforcement learning. We use the actor critic reinforcement learning model, and we follow the mixer training mechanism. In reinforcement learning, the key is to define the reward. In the literature, there is one paper that applies metric-driven reinforcement learning to image captioning. However, they have some limitations, though, which include metrics in image captioning are not perfectly defined yet, and it needs to be retrained for each metric in isolation. Besides, it doesn't have value network to provide a global guidance. So in this paper, instead, we propose to define reward based on visual semantic embedding. It maps both images and the texts into a joint embedding space. In such space, semantically related images and the texts are tend to be close to each other, while non-related sentences will tend to be distant. As we can see, such embedding space provides a very good estimation of how good a sentence is to describe an image. And we use the cosine similarity in this embedding space to define the reward. Here, let me introduce our inference method. As I said before, our framework has a policy network and a value network. If we only consider policy network, it will be equivalent to the existing encoder-decoder framework. And it will tend to pick the highest option at each time step, least in the least sorted by the generation probability. In this paper, however, we propose a look-hand inference to combine both policy network and a value network. And we are more likely to choose a better candidate, even if it's in a lower position in the list. Here is a brief introduction of look-hand inference. It is a variant of bin search. In, in bin search, given the bin size b, it always keeps b number of candidates in the bin, and it consider all possible extensions, and always choose the top b candidates when it moves to the next time step. In look at the inference, we define the scoring function for the top B ranking, which is based on not only the local guidance provided by our policy network, but also the value network, but also the global guidance provided by our value network. As we can see, beam search can only use the local information before each time step, but our look at the inference consider also the global guidance at the time step D, T plus one. Here are some experimental results. We tested on MS Coco dataset, and we used the blue, meteor, roche L, and the cider as metrics. Numbers in red means the best results. Clearly, our results outperform existing method in most metrics. We can divide the existing method into four groups and compare our method to them one by one. The first group of method, they use simple network structure the same as our policy network, as shown here. So we are directly comparable. As we can see, our method upon it by a large margin. The second group of method, they proposed advanced network structure based on our policy network. As we can see, our method still outperforms it in all metrics except one at blue one. It is worth noting that our method is modular to network architecture, which means that these advanced techniques can be directly applied into our policy network, and we believe it will further boost our performance. The third method is Mixer, which is a metric-driven reinforcement learning method we mentioned before. Since it needs to be retrained for each metric in isolation, so a Mixer driven by Blue4 only have Blue4 results reported. On the contrary, our method generalizes very well across all metrics. The last group of methods used the external training data 
However, we did not use any. Surprisingly, without external training data, we still outperform them, thanks to the new framework. So here are some qualitative results. GT here stands for ground truth. SL means our pre-trained policy network with the supervised learning. And SL follows the encoder-decoder framework. As we can see, our method is better at capturing global information. Here on the left, instead of generating a passenger train, we can correctly generate an airplane. On the right, instead of outputting painting, we can correctly generate a painting. Here we can see that our method is less likely to accumulate generation errors. On the left, we can correctly output in standing in the streets other than accumulating errors after, the playing, after the generating the word playing. On the right, we can correctly generate in eating some food. Last but not least, let me conclude with some take home messages. First, in this paper, we propose the novel decision making framework for image captioning which contain an Asian model to combine both local information and global information. We also propose the embedding-driven reinforcement learning method for training and the look hand inference for testing. Secondly, utilizing both global and the local information is important for sequential generation tasks. And lastly, embedding can capture global information and can serve as a very good global guidance. Thank you all very much for your attention and welcome to visit our poster at number 9B.